So it appears our market drought has finally come to an end. Gaben has decided to bless us with a brand new operation. The CSGO Twitter account has been teasing a new operation with some random emojis for a while now, including a shark emoji, which made a lot of people think they were going to get some sort of a shark-related operation. And of course, that's what happened. We got Operation Riptide. It's an official operation, it's already launched and in the game, so if you want to go ahead and check it out, all you gotta do is update CSGO. And with each new operation, people usually have a ton of questions about what to invest into, since operations are one of the best investment periods for CSGO at any point in the game's lifetime. And that's where I come in. My name is Nalo, and welcome to a brand new video on Operation Riptide's investment guide. No sponsor on this video, but if you want to go ahead and support me, you can always use my Skinport affiliate link or my CSGO Float affiliate link. Both of those will be in the description below. Now let's talk about some investments. So we've got four new collections this operation, which is up from the previous three new collections. This time we also have the added Train Collection, and it's a little bit different how the Train Collection actually functions. If you head over to the Operation Star page, all you have to do to get one of the Train Collection skins is just spend a specific amount of stars depending on the tier of item that you want. So if you want a blue, you just have to spend one star. If you want a purple, you have to spend four stars. If you want a pink, you have to spend 20 stars. And if you want a red, you have to spend 100 stars. And you'll get a guaranteed red, blue, purple, whatever you pick. However, there is no guarantee on the float of the item. So you can actually get a battle scarred red out of a $50 capsule, essentially. And that battle scarred red is only going to be worth like 15 bucks. So definitely not worth it if you get a battle scarred one of those items. However, you can definitely get a confirmed red from these capsules. Now, this is a brand new mechanic to CSGO. We've never been able to select a red item using stars. So this is a new thing. And with that comes a lot of new challenges and some new topics to talk about when investing in this type of thing. However, despite this being a guaranteed red, there is still a pretty high level of RNG and variance here. Obviously, you only have a 50-50 chance of actually getting one of the specific skins, and then on top of that with the Glock, you only have a 1 in 4 chance of getting the specified pattern that you want for Gamma Doppler, and you have a 1 in 10 chance of getting the Emerald if they didn't make it harder for any reason. I would expect factory new Glocks to land at around the $70 range once prices stabilize, because obviously there is still a chance that you're getting factory new rather than a guaranteed chance, and I'd expect the M4A4 to land at a similar price once prices stabilize. As for an Emerald Glock, I can see those going for easily $200, maybe even $300. It depends if they mess with the pattern index and made Emeralds easier or harder to get, but I would expect around $200 for an Emerald. Now obviously those are just predictions and you shouldn't really use them as a guide, especially because I'm just seeing this operation just like you guys are, and all of this train stuff is new to me. However, if prices are lower than that, then I would say you have a pretty decent chance of making profit once prices stabilize. The USP Whiteout is also an interesting topic because you can get a factory new USP whiteout and those are worth a pretty sizable amount of money. Since because of the float cap it's pretty hard to get one of these in factory new. If you are able to pull it off though you're going to be making a pretty sizable amount of money. Now when it comes to the train purples we have something that is very similar to doing a trade up. You have a basically 1 in 5 chance of getting yourself an op. Now I do think the op is going to stabilize higher than the other skins because for one it looks really nice, it has a nice looking skin, and of course it's also an op. It also has a nice clean scope with no skin on the scope, and a lot of people do like that as well. So that's a pretty nice op right there. Plus it's a 1 in 5 chance and it's not guaranteed to get a factory new. So for those reasons I think the op is going to stabilize higher than the other purples in the train collection. So if you're looking to do a little bit of gambling, that's actually going to be better than trying to go for a red in one of the other collections. Because getting a red in one of the other collections has an impossibly low chance. And obviously looking at the market after this has already been out for some time now, the ops have been stabilizing a bit higher than the other purples. So you can definitely expect those to perform pretty decent going into the future. This isn't going to be anything crazy like the Desert Eagle Armored Jormungandr, but it's definitely going to be pretty good. We also have the R8 Revolver Blaze, however the R8 did not get any sort of balance change like the other items like the M4A1S for example did, so I don't really think that's going to be anything too crazy. Now we also have some new agents here, however I'm not really a guy that likes agents very much, I don't think they have very good investment potential, and they've shown in the past that, that agents just don't really change the game very much for people when they're actually playing, so for that reason there's just not really a great use case for these agents, and I don't think these are going to be a worthwhile thing to look into compared to some of the other stuff. However, both these scuba agents and that really crazy over-designed French agent, I think those are really cool, and I think there's going to be some hype for those. Moving on to the normal collection skins, this is the Dust 2 collection, the Mirage collection, and the Vertigo collections for 2021. This is really going to default to the same strategy as the Broken Fang collection. If you're new here, basically that strategy is just going for skins that are going to make really good trade-up inputs, like for example the pinks. Obviously we have that absolutely amazing golden AK, and by the way, that golden AK 
AK has an insane amount of hype. I've seen more hype for that AK even than the new op. Even though the op itself is really cool, people just love that golden AK. So if you're a super high tier investor or if you're just looking to get a really high tier skin from this operation, that golden AK is going to be your best friend. Don't get me wrong, that op is super cool too, but it doesn't even hold a candle to the amount of hype I've seen for that golden AK. Side tracking aside, the strategy here is to just look for skins that people are really going to like from these operations. It's pretty easy to gauge just by looking on Twitter or some other CSGO community area where people are going to be talking about skins that they like and don't like, and that's going to be a good way to find out which skins are going to have the most hype behind them and will command the most volume. And then like I said before the sidetrack, look for stuff that's going to be common in trade-ups and by the trade-up inputs because those are usually going to do pretty good long term. It's really the same strategy used for Broken Fang and largely Shattered Web as well, so that's what I would go with. As for the Vertigo collection, I would really just look into that AK-47 green laminate. That's the only one that really stands out to me at all. Everything else is kind of just eh. The coverts, you're going to be able to find better coverts in the other two collections. And for that reason, Vertigo seems to just kind of be the ugly duckling of the bunch, if anything. I will say there was a pretty popular investment strategy in the previous operation where people were going for the ugly duckling collection that people weren't going to buy because it would result in a lower quantity overall of those skins. And that's true. Historically, we are seeing a lower quantity of these skins being actually put out onto the market. However, the volume and the hype and the draw for these skins is still a lot lower. So even though you're getting a rarer skin overall, the skin itself doesn't really have a whole ton of appeal to a lot of people. So the prices end up being still pretty balanced. As for the stickers, I quite like them. A lot of people are kind of overlooking these surf shop stickers. These are actually really cool and have a really cool system where you can actually kind of get a one in four chance of a certain type of color or hollow effect, depending on the tier of sticker that you get. I think this is a super cool system going forward and a lot of these stickers look really, really cool. So if you're interested in getting stickers from this operation, that's going to be the thing to focus on. So far, I've opened around 30 or so stars worth of these stickers and I've gotten some pretty cool ones. So I'm definitely happy with my purchase there. As for the patches, I would honestly just skip those. And finally, for the case we have pretty much an identical system to operation broken fang so if you're interested in investing in anything in this case or the case itself just look at the equivalent broken fang trend and see how that worked out nothing too complicated guys now the only other thing i wanted to touch on for the end of this video is previous operations a lot of people like to talk about previous operations and how those skins are going to perform so with older operation skins one of the big things with them is if there's any uncertainty in the markets going forward because people think that the skins are going to be re-released in a future operation however now that riptide is officially launched, we can see that none of the collections from Broken Fang or Shattered Web or Hydra have been re-released into this collection in any way, shape, or form. So a lot of that uncertainty should leave the markets and we should see at least a small bump in price for the older Operation skins. The only thing I would not recommend holding right now from Broken Fang is anything from the Ancient collection because we do have that Major coming up soon which will use Ancient in its map pool and will likely create Ancient souvenirs. On that same note, there's also discussion going on as to if CSGO will also re-release the current collections, the 2021 Dust, Mirage, Train, etc collections. I went ahead and ran a poll on this on Twitter to see if they were going to re-release these skins as souvenirs in the upcoming major. It seems like a lot of people think they will, so take with that what you will. There is kind of two sides to this argument though. Obviously one side to it is just the blatant fact that they probably will do this because these are going to be active duty maps. And the other side of this argument is that these maps are new. A lot of things changed on this map are new and some tournament regulation might prevent them from using the new version of the map because people have been training on the old version of the map. I personally think we will see a re-release for the major, but that's still a couple months out. So for now, there's not really much to worry about. And as for the Operation Pass, obviously it's good to pick up a couple of those just because those do tend to go up in value over time. They're probably one of the most safest surefire investments you can make. However, there is always a chance the Operation Pass goes on sale near the end of the operation. So if you're wanting to pick those up, just wait. So that's about all I have for you guys so far. Those are the skins I would look into. Obviously, we're going to have to wait and see on the Major if any of these skins get re-releases as souvenir versions. But overall, it's happy times for CSGO. I think we're going to see a lot of new players coming back and testing out the new short competitive mode, which I personally really like and seeing some of these new things added from the other parts of the operation. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be making more periodic updates to the operation investments as we get through this operation, so hopefully you'll come back to the channel and stick around for one of those. If you want to go ahead and watch one of those updated investment guides once we get a bit more information about things and see a bit more of the market trends and a bit more stabilization, then be sure to click that subscribe button down below and subscribe to the Best Investment channel on YouTube for CSGO. And of course like the video if this helped you out and was quickly made and uploaded. I literally stayed up all night to make this video so hopefully it ended up being useful to you and maybe check out one of my affiliate links down below if you want to go ahead and support the channel thanks guys see you in the next one peace